Hi guys, visual recaps here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain a mystery and thriller movie with an interesting plot, called ATM. The movie starts by showing a man named David, who works as a stockbroker. One day, he is too tired and says to one of his friends, Corey, that he wants to go home earlier. Corey doesn't allow him because that day is the last day of their friend, Emily working in the office. David secretly likes her. In other words, there is no other chance than that day to get closer with her. Corey remembers that tonight there is a Christmas party for all employees. Right in the party, David sees Emily from a distance. He then ventures to approach her alone. Their conversation becomes awkward because he is a person who lacks confidence. As a result, he is left by Emily who wants to go home. After that, Emily is waiting for a taxi by the side of the road, but David suddenly approaches her again, hoping they can chat longer. Their conversation is so intense, so that Emily misses her taxi and has to wait again. David certainly takes the opportunity to offer her a ride. Luckily, she accepts the offer. Davin then says to Corey that he wants to take Emily home first. However, Corey, who has no money, takes advantage of the moment to go home with David. Hearing this, David is worried that he would ruin his moment with Emily. He tries to give him some money, but unfortunately he doesn't have any either. They finally go home together. In the middle of the trip, Corey, who is drunk, forgets where his cell phone is. He then borrows David's cell phone to call people at his house, saying that he is on his way home. Not long after, David's cell phone runs out of battery. Corey suddenly feels hungry and he wants to eat pizza. They finally stop at a local ATM booth to withdraw cash because the pizza outlet only accepts cash. An upset David parks his car some distance from the booth, so Corey has to walk further. Shortly after, Corey calls David from inside, it seems he is having a problem. David rushes inside, leaving Emily in the car alone. After a while, a curious Emily decides to go inside. It turns out that Corey has encountered card problems. As a result, they will use David's money first. When they want to go back to the car, they spot a hooded figure in a parka coat lurking outside in the parking lot. The group initially suspect the figure to be a robber and discover that he cannot enter the booth without an ATM card. Later, there is a dog walker approaching him, but he immediately kills the dog walker. Seeing the incident, they attempt to phone the police, but their only hope is Emily's cell phone, which was left in the car. They panic and look for something to use. Meanwhile, the hooded man keeps watching them until 30 minutes later. David is planning to go back to his car, but the strange man seems to notice something and goes straight to David's car to get a toolbox from the trunk. He then walks towards the back of the room. After some deliberation, David didn't go to his car as they prefer to wait until morning. The hooded man suddenly shuts down the lights in the booth, including the heater which is meant to keep them cold. Emily unintentionally sees the smoke detector above them, but they don't have a match to make smoke in the room. David then thinks that the strange man is asking for money, so he decides to negotiate their safety by giving the killer $500, Emily's earrings, and Corey's watch. The killer takes the things that has been given to him. David uses the opportunity to escape to his car, where he finds out that the vehicle's ignition wires have been severed, so the car cannot start. He attempts to call 911 using Emily's cell phone, but eventually he is attacked by the man. He accidentally drops Emily's phone as he escapes back to the booth. The killer then picks up the phone. They have no clue about what the killer wants from them. Now, the only thing that Emily has is a lipstick. She desperately uses it to write help on the booth's window to attract attention. In the meantime, the three of them are freezing when suddenly a security guard locates them. When the guard sees a dead body and tries to call the cops, unfortunately the hooded man beats him to death using a tire iron from David's car trunk, causing the three to be shocked. Soon, a man with a similar coat enters the booth. He is immediately killed by David and Corey. When they check his identity card, it is revealed to be only an innocent janitor who cleans the booth every morning. Corey decides to use the coat from the janitor. Feeling frustrated, he chooses to leave from the booth, but sadly he gets caught by the trap and stabbed by the hooded man. The killer starts to walk towards the back and brings a water hose. After several hours, David and Emily accidentally realize that Corey is still alive. They retrieve him from outside narrowly managing to return to the booth before the hooded man can get to them. After that, the man blocks the booth door with David's car and tries to freeze them to death by filling the booth with cold water. As the result, Corey dies of blood loss and hypothermia. Insanely, the killer puts a chair just to watch their action from the outside. Later, David manages to find a lighter from the janitor's coat. He then lifts Emily on his shoulders to trigger the fire sprinkler system alarm, 
but sadly he slips, causing Emily to fall and fatally break her neck. The hooded man slams David's car into the booth. Angered, David improvises a Molotov cocktail from Corey's alcohol bottle and throws it at the killer, but the figure he sets ablaze turns out to be the dead guard. At the end, the police arrive to arrest David as the hooded man hides himself in the crowd. In other words, he is suspected of breaking into an ATM and premeditated murder because he is the only person in that place. He tries to explain everything to the police but he still gets ignored. As he is driven away, he sees many figures wearing parkas in the crowd. The police recover surveillance recordings of the events in the ATM booth, but it is made clear that the killer had planned his actions so as not to appear in the footage, miraculously framing David for his crimes. The movie ends with the hooded man returns to his headquarters, and then he immediately sits down at his desk and begins to plan similar attacks on the other ATMs. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.